Look, I'll be completely honest. I was a Sony kid growing up. Unfortunately, that means I didn't get to really enjoy the Nintendo 64 like a lot of you all did. I recently hunted down a Nintendo 64 for about $90. Yes, Nintendo 64s still go for over $100. I got an excellent deal on it with two controllers. And trust me when I say that the 45 minute drive was well worth it for me. It didn't come with any games, but that's not gonna be a problem because of this little device right here. Let's get into it. Before we get into it, I just wanted to give a friendly reminder that if you do enjoy videos like this, please make sure you go and hit that big red button down below and hit the like button while you're at it. It's free and it really helps the channel. This is the Retro Blaster Programmer from Retro Stage. I will have the link for this down in the description below. This is a device that lets you reprogram N64 cartridges to, well, whatever you want. I mean, technically that's not quite right, but so far I haven't come across a Nintendo 64 game that I haven't been able to play on my Nintendo 64. See, on Retro Stage, you can go not only by the programmer, but by different cartridge adapters and blank what they call blasters, which you can put any game on and it'll play natively right on your hardware. This also goes for any Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, but I'll kind of get into that a little later in the video. Now this isn't a 100% perfect solution, but I haven't really run into any issues with any of the games. Now if you're able to actually get one of these from RetroStage, they make everything super easy. All you need to do is download the software from their GitHub page, plug in the device via USB, and then you have to just follow their PDF guide. I think it maybe took me like 30 total minutes to get everything up and running, it's super easy. Now the basic idea is super simple. You're taking the ROM and you're writing it on the cartridge and you're deleting the old ROM file, or the old N64 file. You know what I'm talking about. So it's very important that you don't actually delete maybe something sentimental or very important, uh, like Super Smash Brothers. Now why you would be rewriting a Super Smash Bros cart, I'm not 100% sure, but people do dumb things accidentally sometimes. So just be really careful when you actually write everything on there so you're not deleting anything that you might actually want later on. And that's exactly why I used this right here. I got this for $5 at my local game store and I quite honestly do not care what happens to it. Sorry game. Now RetroSage does have some YouTube videos that if you need to, you can follow along step by step as they take you through the process of writing games onto new cartridges and dumping the ROMs and all sorts of other fun stuff. However, they are a couple years old, so when you're doing it, you probably won't have an identical piece of software. Um, so just kind of be aware when you're following. Nonetheless, they're really great resources to use. In order to make sure everything was working properly on the N64, I did notice that you have to have a .N64 file versus like a .Z64 or a .B64, which a lot of the ROM files that you can find online are. For whatever reason, the N64 didn't really like to read the .Z or the .V64 files, so just kind of be aware of that as you're moving along this process. I did scour the internet looking for a .N64 file library. Unfortunately, most everything, like I said, is in .Z64 or .V64, so it's just kind of unfortunate. But my search ultimately led me to finding a program called Tool64. Tool64 actually allows you to change the file formats between a .N64, a .Z64, and a .V64. You can do this by going to Options, then Settings, and then changing whichever file format you want just to make sure it has the correct extension in there. I chose byte swapping as when I was doing a lot of the testing, it seemed to be the one that worked best for me. What's really great about this device as well is that you can actually take the original files from the cartridges and save them. So they should natively be an .n64 file if your friend you know, feels so inclined to let you borrow their entire collection. Now, if you're wanting to play Game Boy or Game Boy Color games, there is an additional step. Basically, we're just changing the .gb or .gbc file into an N64 file, like we've kind of already been talking about. Luckily, there's a website, so unlike the Tool64, you don't even have to download anything. 
The website is super simple. Simply click Choose Files, select whatever Game Boy or Game Boy Color game you want, and then convert it into an .n64 file. Really that easy. <laughs> From there, you'll just go back into the Retro Blaster software, select the file, and write it onto the cartridge. And just like that, you have the entire Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and N64 library at your disposal. So go on, go do all of the fun stuff. And uh, honestly, I would highly recommend picking up one of these controllers. This is the Retro Brawler 64 plugs in. It is a wireless modern style controller for the N64. It works phenomenally. I highly recommend going and picking up one of these. The links to all these products will be down in the description below. And while you're down there, why don't you just hit that big red subscribe button and like this video. It's free. I would love it. And it really does help the channel. Now go and play all of the games you want. We'll catch you in the next video.